Hi, this is Amy from Geary Electric, and I wanted to show you some of the customization options available for managing thin client terminals when you're using our Thin Manager software. So let's take a look here at this terminal that we've called Demo. So when I double click on the terminal name, the terminal configuration wizard launches. What I really love about the Thin Manager software is all of the configuration is done in easy to use wizards, and a lot of the terminology is very easy to explain. So in a previous video, we've gone through the first two pages, so I'm going to start at the third page here on our screen. This first option in the terminal configuration is what really makes Thin Manager shine, the option to allow the terminal to be replaced if offline. If you've seen any of our other videos where we're able to quickly and easily swap out a Thin Client terminal, it's because of this option right here. So if my terminal goes offline, this is what allows me to connect a new terminal to my Thin Manager system and take this terminal profile and ID and apply it to the new terminal. If you look further down this page, you'll see the shadowing options. What's really great about the shadowing options is they're really customizable. I have the option of shadowing each of these terminals through the Thin Manager software myself, or I also have the option of assigning the shadow of this terminal to a display on another client I've got on my system. So you can see the options here for shadowing. I'm allowing the terminal to be shadowed. I can warn that terminal that it's about to become shadowed. I can ask for permission, or I can deny shadowing entirely. You can see the option here for interactive shadow as well. That's what allows us to click on things and interact with that terminal as if we we're using the mouse connected to it. If you deactivate this checkbox, it'll be a read-only connection to that terminal. So on our next page, we have our terminal mode selection. So you can see here we have the option to enable or disable relevant user and location services and that's what's set up down here in these tabs. Check out one of our other videos for more information on how those are set up and what they do in the system. We also have the option here to enable multi-monitor. Currently in Thin Manager version 10 we can have up to six monitors within our system. Each monitor can be customized with its own resolution and the video port that it's connected to on the Thin Client terminal. We have the option as well with multiple monitors of choosing how those monitors are laid out within our system. If you've chosen the multiple monitor option, you'll see on the next tab you can choose the monitor layout and how those are set up within your facility. So you have the option of choosing your monitor layout as well as your screen layout. When you set up your screen layout, you can actually assign different content to each monitor within your system. You can add as many display clients as needed for each screen, as well as edit the settings for each display client individually. For example, showing the display client selector, that menu bar at the top of the screen that lets you choose display clients or log in and out, as well as to enable and disable tiling on that monitor itself. I'm going to go back through and disable this as I'm set up for one monitor here, and we'll go through some of the next screens. So this is probably the most important page in your terminal configuration wizard and where you're likely to head to most of the time. This is where you select the display clients to be shown on your terminal. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove all the rest of these display clients so I can show you just the desktop on my terminal for now. On this screen you'll see our terminal interface options. So this is the show selector, the menu bar at the top of the screen, enable or disable tiling for the terminal itself, Screen Edge Display Client Selection, that's what allows you to move your mouse to the left and right hand side of the screen and lets Thin Manager cycle through the displays on the terminal. You also have the option to customize what is allowed and disallowed on your main menu options. On our Relevance Options screen, this is what allows you to assign a location to this terminal, requiring the terminal to be in a specific location to operate. You can enable QR location IDs for the content on this terminal, as well as Bluetooth, GPS, and Wi-Fi locations. Just bear with me a few more minutes, we're almost done going through these screens. What I really want you to see is the breadth of customization options that are available within Thin Manager. Keep in mind, these relevance options are only available because on a previous screen, we chose to allow relevance location services at this terminal. The number of screens in this wizard is dynamic and changes based on the options you select or deselect as you're going through the wizard. So our next page is hotkey configuration. You can enable or disable the hotkeys available to your terminal from here. For example, if I wanted to change the tiling hotkey available to this terminal, the default is Control T. I could change that to Alt T or Control and another key within my keyboard. 
this login configuration, again, available because we chose for the terminal to have a logon on a previous screen. This is the username and password that we're having our terminal use to log into our Windows domain. Video resolution is where we can customize the resolution to our single monitor that we have in this setup. And the final screen we're going to look at in this wizard is our module selection. So these modules are essentially drivers that we're sending to this terminal. For example, you connect a new mouse to your computer, Windows will automatically download the driver so that the device functions properly. And since our thin clients have the USB ports disabled by default for anything other than a keyboard and mouse, if you'd like to use these ports for anything else, uh, for example, a RFID card reader, then you would have to install the configuration for this module to the device so that when the device powers up and receives its configuration and firmware from Thin Manager, the knowledge of how to use that device and how to interpret the messages over USB is sent to the terminal as well. So that's it on walking you through the screens here and our terminal configuration wizard in Thin Manager. Check out our other videos online at geary.com/ra.